Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to look at adding credit card fees to an invoice so that it matches the deposit. And often these deposits are from Stripe or PayPal or uh, QuickBooks uh, online credit card services. And the, the fee is generally taken uh, at source. It is deducted from the total deposit. So you want to be able to match the payment to the invoice, but of course the amount isn't the same. So let's go through the process. The, for the first step, we're going to enter an invoice and then I am going to show you two different ways in which you can reflect the credit card fees. So if we go to uh, sales, invoices, I'm going to open this link in a new tab. And that way I can look at both at the same time and not have to go back and forth. So let's create an invoice. We're going to select a customer, adversary, company. So let's sell them some audio recording devices. Uh, the quantity of this will be two. And I'm going to give them a discount of 10%. So you'll see the total amount of the invoice is $254.25, which includes HST. Also, the invoice date is January 1st. Let's do that because the date of the downloaded transaction is January 26th. And we're going to assume that they paid a couple of weeks after we sent them the invoices. So let's just save and close this for now. And now when I go to my bank transactions, and if I click anywhere on the transaction, it opens up the details relating to the transaction. You click on match, and here all of your unpaid invoices show up. So if we scroll down to the bottom, I can see the invoice that I just created. And so that is going to be the one that we are going to pay. You'll see now that QuickBooks automatically assigns the amount of the downloaded deposit of $241.25. However, I want to fully pay this invoice because I know this $241.25 actually includes fees. So in this case, I am just going to enter $254.25. And then you'll see down here, I actually have a difference of $13. QuickBooks actually allows me to resolve this difference and allocate it to an account directly within this match interface. So I simply toggle this resolve button and then it opens up another section where you can choose the category of the difference. And we know the difference are bank charges or Stripe fees. So I am going to enter bank charges. If you have enough Stripe transactions, I recommend entering and creating an account called Stripe fees, which could be a sub account of your bank charges. If the class and location applies, you can enter that. Uh, in our case, it doesn't really matter. And we are going to put in minus $13 and you'll see this difference goes away. And the GST, uh, HST on this transaction is exempt. And it is purchases because bank transactions, bank charges, strife fees, et cetera, are always exempt. There is no GST, HST on them. So now you have a fully matched transaction. This invoice is completely paid and will show up as fully paid and you have allocated the difference to the bank charges account. So we'll click on match and that's it. You have, so now when we go to the transaction itself, when we go to invoices, we can see this, this invoice is reflected as deposited and there is no balance remaining. 
So let me show you the second way. Uh, and I prefer the second way just because I have a little more control over how it shows up in my accounting. So let's go in and create the next invoice, which is going to be for the 21963. And generally speaking, you will have already created the invoice and you are simply going to edit it to match the amount of the fees. So if I go to invoices, create, I can also go to this plus over here, create an invoice and we are going to select Adversary Co. again. The invoice date in this case, let's select January 15th. And let's say we gave them some consulting services that cost $200. So now the total amount of the invoice is $226. And that is what we need to collect from them. So we're going to save that. Now, if we go back to the bank transactions, you'll see here that it's 21963. So I want to actually make the amount of the invoice equal to $219.63 because I know the difference is bank fees. So in this case, in the second example that I'm showing you, I'm going to actually modify the invoice. And to modify the invoice, you simply go into the invoice that we just created, click on edit, and then you can add, enter a second line, which are the bank charges. So I am going to enter the bank charge on line two by uh, creating a new item called bank charges. And once you create it, then it'll be there in the future. So let's add bank charges. Uh, this pops up. Bank charges are not only a service, they are not inventory. And really what you have to enter is the account the bank charges relate to, which is bank charges. And even though it says income account, you can also put in expense accounts. And you want this to be reflected in the expense account, which is bank charges. And then sales tax is exempt. That is automatic because that was already set up in the bank of, uh, in the chart of accounts. Uh, and this was the default sales tax. So let's save and close this. And now we have bank charges. We're going to put one and our total invoice is 226 while the amount of the deposit is 21963. So I can simply put 226 minus 219.63, and you can calculate it directly in this little box here. It's actually a cool feature of QuickBooks. I have a separate video on that, but you can see it right here. Since this is a deduction, I have to put a minus in front of it. And your whole invoice can't be a negative, but you can actually have negative deductions from the total of, of your invoice. So I'm going to put that and then it automatically shows up at 6.37. I can take out the rest of the zeros here because we just don't want the client to see that. And the sales tax in this case is exempt. Uh, and uh, you'll see now my total is 21963, which is the amount of the Stripe uh, downloaded deposit. So I'm simply going to save and close this. And now when I go back to Stripe, if I just refresh this page, it should have detected the invoice and it should match to it automatically. And we can see that it has. We just kind of click on this, make sure that it is um, matching to the right invoice, and then simply click on match. And that's it. So look, either way is good. Uh, as indicated, I do prefer the second way because I can choose 
at the type of transaction that is reflected on the invoice and I can see it directly on the invoice. So it becomes easier to track. But the first way is fine too, especially if you don't have a lot of transactions. If you do have a lot of Stripe transactions, then you might want to use the, the second way. Uh, but in this case, uh, it is useful to enter the invoices individually, again, so you can see exactly what you're billing for. So that uh, is the end of this tutorial. Please uh, subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Have a great day.